Chapter 23, The Issue of Time. Kiori Tanaka's first word was nomad, even though she had no nomadic blood, not as far as she could tell, judging by her parents. But one thing she did inherit from her parents, specifically from her mother, was a keen sense of time. One of her first orders of business as the older sister was to teach Jen how to tell time. Unfortunately, Jen didn't have much of a knack for it. What time is it? Kaori had asked one afternoon a few years before, when Jen was just starting to learn. Kaori had drawn a clock on a sheet of paper. Anyone could see it was 3.30, the peak of the witching hour. But Jen stared at the clock blankly. Instead of giving the right time, Jen sat down with her legs stretched in front of her and grabbed her toes. She'd always been a weekly girl. I don't know, Jen had said, but who cares? All I have to do is look at Mom's cell phone or the microwave and it will tell me right away. With the numbers. This has numbers too, Kaori said. But it doesn't tell me straight out, Kaori sighed. Life can't always be straight out, you know. This was the first and last time Kaori had tried to teach Jen how to tell time. But she never stopped hounding her about one of life's most important lessons. Be punctual. One of the things Kaori appreciated most about Virgil was his punctuality. If he said he would be somewhere at 8.13 and 40 seconds, that's what time he would arrive. Sometimes a little earlier, but never later, not even by a minute. And that's why she knew something was wrong even before she looked at the clock and saw that he was 15 minutes late. It's not like him to just not show up. He didn't even give us a, sorry, can't make it, Kaori told Jen. They were standing side by side at the living room window looking through the blinds, waiting for Virgil's skinny little body to come up the walk. It doesn't seem right that he wouldn't text, especially because he knows how precious my time is, and I have that new client coming later. Maybe he forgot, said Jen. Doubtful, said Kaori. Maybe his mom or dad made him do something else and he didn't have a chance to tell us. That seemed more likely. Parents had a way of getting in the middle of things and screwing everything up, but still... It doesn't seem right, said Kaori. He still would have texted or something. She opened the front door and took a step outside. She crossed her arms and scanned the road with her dark, lined eyes. This proved the level of her concern. Kaori never stepped outside for clients. She always demanded the password. When you have powers of second sight, you have to protect yourself. Look what happened to the Salem witches. Jen stood next to her and crossed her arms, too. If their parents had been home, they would have told them to shut the door because they were letting all the air conditioning out. And didn't they know how much money they were wasting? But praise be to the ancestors, Mr. and Mrs. Tanaka had Saturday errands. I have a bad feeling, Kaori said. She tipped her head back and looked to the sky for signs. But it was a bright blue cloudless day. Some would say it was a beautiful day. But Kaori thought rainstorms had much more personality. Jen's eyes widened. Maybe you should consult the crystals. Oh, yes, the crystals. How could she have forgotten the crystals? But those were reserved for special occasions. She wasn't sure if a client being 20 minutes late qualified. Let's text him again, just for good measure, Kaori said. They walked back inside and went to Kaori's bedroom, where she had laid her cell phone just outside the door. She preferred not to use her phone in the chamber because she wasn't sure how the world of the hereafter felt about such things. She'd explained cell phones and the internet to the spirits, so they were all up to speed, but you never know. Virgil didn't answer the text, so Kaori called. It went straight to his generic voicemail. Kaori hung up, leaned against the wall in the hallway, and chewed her bottom lip. At 11.30, she developed a pit of concern in her belly. At 11.35, she considered that something could be gravely wrong. By 11.40, she was convinced that Virgil Salinas had met a terrible fate, and it was time to consult the crystals. She kept them in a small velvet sling bag inside a locked box behind a stack of spell books under her bed. Jen was the only one who knew where the crystals were, and it was her greatest secret as far as both of them were concerned. Jen had to swear on her past, present, and future lives that she would never reveal the location of the crystals for as long as she lived. When she asked Kaori where the crystals came from, Kaori put her fingers to her lips and said, the keeper of secrets may ask no questions. In truth, 
Kaori had gotten them at a garage sale. Mrs. Tanaka loved going to garage sales. She thought it was absolutely wonderful that Kaori wanted to go along because she called it mother-daughter time. But really, Kaori just wanted to see what kind of treasures people were giving away for a nickel. And that's where she had found the crystals. The woman selling them said you were supposed to use them to fill flower vases. For decoration, the lady said, but Kaori knew better. The secrets of the universe buried themselves in unusual and beautiful objects such as these, and only a select few could pull those secrets out. So she had bought the crystals for 10 cents. Kaori locked her bedroom door as Jen wiggled under the bed for the box. Once she had it, she carried it gingerly to the rug. Kaori opened it, removed the bag, and shook out the crystals. They both leaned forward. A close inspection. What do you see? asked Jen quietly. Kaori studied each crystal without touching it. They were all different colors, red, blue, clear, and pink. She scanned the clear plastic one with particular interest. He didn't forget the appointment, she said. He's been detained somehow. Detained? What's that mean? Not detained, detained, held up. Jen gasped. You mean with a gun? No, no, not held up with a gun, just interrupted somehow. She straightened her back and added with some authority, something has prevented him from being here. But we know that already, since he's not here. Kaori ignored her. Jen was a helpful assistant, but could be insufferable. Something's happened, said Kaori. Of this, I am certain. <laughs>